so overall welcome to this debriefing session and congratulations on two things on you know getting uh, scoring a 750 the second is the admit to isb so how does it feel yeah. i think before we talk about your preparation how does it feel to be where it you feels are relaxing now because it has been a, a long journey like team and preparation and then going through the uh, the admission process of isb so it feel like i feel relaxed now that yeah on the journey uh, of admissions is over now the next journey of going through an mba is going to start so yeah it feels great so mm. like, thank you for your support throughout the journey of gmat and also uh, like you were you're there till the till i got an admit so thank you for the support well thank you for, well, you yeah. you're welcome yeah. first of all and mm. i think it's it's more of um, the team that supported you more than i correct yeah exactly mm. So, so, so let's kind of talk about your GMAT preparation. So, three attempts, six sixty, seven hundred and seven fifty. That's the one that I know of. Were there mm. any other attempts? No, these were three attempts. Okay. Yeah, but I want to just uh, like talk about two attempts because the first one was a mess up because like the, the, there were disturbances at test center. So, mm. like I, so like I could not focus. So the, the the verbal part was totally messed up because I was not able to focus on the reading comprehension part and. In the critical reasoning part, so mm -hmm. I just spoiled that attempt because of the disturbance. So, so I, I, I like I uh, sent sent a request to the GMAC team that I face this issue. So uh, they, uh, what do you call, gave me a free retake for the next. They gave you a free retake. Okay. So, so let's yeah. kind of talk about. So you went there. You actually got a Q51 and a V27 in that one, right? Yeah, correct. Mm. And 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 so you 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 complained to to the GMAC. They must have viewed uh, the so, recording so, or something. Huh, they have the recordings. Uh, like, even, like after every break, after the verbal break, also I I uh, communicate to the coordinator there, invigilator there that I am facing issue with the uh, with the noise because the person beside me is sick and he's coughing a lot. I cannot focus. But that time we didn't listen. They didn't take took it seriously. But uh, I I told it af after every break, after quant break also I told I am not able to focus. But nothing happened there. So they told raise a ticket with the GMAC team. They will get back to you. Uh, GMAC gotcha. and the Pearson team. Post the test, I wrote an email that this is what happened in the test and at the mm -hmm. test center. So can you please look into it? So mm -hmm. so yeah, like after two or three email exchanges, they finally agreed to give me a free retake. Okay, that's that's good to know. Yeah. So 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 yeah. you had this. So how did you prepare for your first or let's call it second attempt? So um, so the first attempt went like I was devastated by the score which I got in first attempt. But I knew that like that was not my actual ability because mm -hmm. when I gave my first mock test, I, I scored Q51 and Q27. That was my starting score. Mm -hmm. So I thought like I can't like I've spent three four months. I can't be at the same score. Mm -hmm. And in the in the in the in the official mock test mock test also I was scoring around 730, 740, 750. Mm -hmm. So so in the uh, I think next phase. Uh, I revised few concepts and uh, I think practiced more, but mm -hmm. didn't. Uh, but I think in the second attempt, uh, I didn't follow the proper strategy in the verbal section. So I discussed this with Sharang and Karan also that I, I in the verbal section, I, I was always short on time. Like I didn't used mm -hmm. to finish all the 36 questions in uh, 65 mm -hmm. minutes. So what I thought was that I will complete first 10 questions in first 15 minutes and then I will go slow so that uh, I have time till 36 question. So what happened was I uh, drastically reduced so my 10, accuracy. In 10, 10 questions in 15 minutes. Yeah. Wow. The first how, 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 how did you come up with this idea? <laughs> Just because I used to leave around uh, four, three, four questions in the end. So I thought let's cut down time for the first few questions so that I have some time left in the end. And did you take any mock with that strategy using that yeah, strategy? Yeah, and that worked for me in the mocks. <laughs> and what I Which did mock did you me. take? I was doing official mocks. I had Manhattan mocks and Veritas mocks. Okay. But I was scoring uh, like 720, 730. So like... And you had not seen any of those questions before? Which questions? I didn't get. I mean, all the official yeah, yeah, mocks correct, are correct, available correct, correct. on Yeah, GMAT those Club. were... Yeah, yeah, I didn't uh, take, take any retake of that. Uh, so it's, it's not uh, so much about the retake. All the questions in Manhattan mock and the official mocks are exactly. available on GMAT Club. So, so, so I mean, that's where I'm coming from. You seem to be scoring really well in mocks in your first attempt, in your second attempt, yet your actual scores did not reflect that, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, and 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 and, and so that's what I'm saying. Uh, could it be that that your scores in in actual mocks were not representative because 
the questions that you saw in the actual mocks, you'd already seen some of those questions before. In the later part uh, of my preparation, I, I, like, I, I only found like one or two questions maybe which were familiar, but I didn't find any significant familiar. Oh, two like, questions make a huge uh, difference. Yeah, okay, two questions, okay. One or two questions, okay. I mean, imagine this, right? Two questions in the first 10 or first 11 is, is, okay. is, is, is about four minutes of time. If it's about four mm. minutes of time, it, it, they make a huge difference in the end because mm. you're, you're now spending 15 minutes for eight questions instead of 10. But 15 okay. minutes for eight questions isn't so bad. But for 10 mm. questions, that's when, when you start to, to cut it short. Cut it, yeah. And so like in my ASR, I found that my accuracy dropped drastically in the first, uh, but then it, it, it drastically went upwards. Like it was like around 80 to 90% in the second, second uh, quartile. And it was around, uh, I think, 40 percent in the first quartile. So, uh, though I maintained the accuracy in the further quartile, but still my f- score didn't uh, took off from there. Yeah, it's because I mean, when when that happened, uh, you you probably had. Uh, 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 I, I'm actually looking at the ESR over here, hmm. and and I remember when your email came in, and I said, "This is." an interesting attempt, which is kind of where I said, hey, Shalom, you need to get into, get in on this one. Because because it just seems like, uh, uh, so here is your uh, V34 attempt over here. And, and this is where you, you messed up on a lot of stuff. And I can see the time piece over here, a minute 18 on an average. Yeah, correct, yeah. Okay, I mean, you really rush through things because of yeah. which uh, you can really see over here things became easy for you. The average difficulty over here was easy. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. the one question that you, you made a mistake was, was a difficult one. But other than that, everything was easier. Then as the difficulty level went up, your accuracy dropped again, and which is kind of where you, 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 you kind of faltered. And this is despite you spending the biggest chunk of time. So Correct. for me, mm-hmm. what this section shows is that you did not have the ability, requisite ability. Too, mm. Because that's where, despite spending time, you made mistakes. And then over here, again, you had ample time. You still made mistakes. Again, shows lack of ability for, sure. for me. So, um, so I mean, you really, in, in the second attempt, this V34 was fairly representative. I wouldn't blame the first part over here. Because essentially, if you think about this estimate over here, you know, you see this estimate here, the the all line, the yellow line over here. Mm. Let me actually draw this and see if I can, this part over here. This is this is more like a V40 to me already over here. Okay. Okay, but because you made all of these mistakes here, this dropped in, in the final mm. row. And which is because mm. that was the most likely, it's called the max. You, you are an engineer, you know maximum likelihood estimation, right? Yeah, correct. Right, it, it's used. It's max. Mm. Yeah, so that's what the same thing is what the algorithm does. It uses the maximum likelihood estimation, and 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 mm. uh, and and that's where this was after the second block. This was kind of your mass, maximum likelihood estimation, and this is then given all the mistakes you had over here. This is what became the maximum likelihood estimation. So one of the major learnings which I got from this attempt was like I didn't follow the process for every question like the the, the process of elimination mm-hmm. like the the major learning which I carried forward for the last attempt right so the one thing was like whatever my ability is whether I'm an expert mm-hmm. at any any section SC but I I made it uh, very clear to me that I will not skip the process I will eliminate every option in in every um, section like CR, R, SC, and RC. I think that's that's one thing which helped me in increasing my accuracy in the third attempt. So, so let's kind also, of compare this. Let's kind of hmm. go a bit deeper in this. So, hmm. it, let's kind of look at sentence correction in the second attempt and how you would attempt a question in the second attempt, and then sentence correction as to how you would attempt the question in the third attempt. So, tell me the difference. So can you repeat your question? Sorry. So in this, so let's compare your second and third attempt. You said you you mm. followed the process more religiously in the third attempt, mm. which is what mm. helped you improve. So let's walk me through, you know, Avril solving a question in the second attempt, how Avril would approach it or how Avril mm. approached it in the second attempt and then compare mm. it with how you approached it in the third, in, in the final attempt. 
so in the second time what i did was uh, like i re- i read the full sentence then i mm-hmm. found find some like maybe some few errors and then i directly jumped on to uh, the options and then uh, whatever options feels uh, uh, mm-hmm. good to me right sounds good to me then i selected that and then eliminate uh, like suppose there are two very similar looking options mm-hmm. so uh, uh, what i actually need to do is like just see which options fits best and which uh, actually reproduces the same meaning as the original mm-hmm. sentence so that i didn't do in my second attempt mm. but in the third attempt what i did i, I followed the whole process like uh, uh, like i read the sentence find few errors and then mm. read each and every sentence eliminate in eliminate it on a solid ground not on mm. a, a sound basis that it sound good to me so mm. that's what i followed for every sentence and then i marked the answer i uh, so i didn't leave any option unread or, or uh, unanalyzed so how did you go from you know the strategy that you followed in your second attempt to what you followed in your final attempt so so karan and sharan uh, like deeply analyzed my performance and uh, like mm-hmm. uh, like took small, like many information like much information from me like what i did in my second attempt so from that they deduced that i i was following the wrong process and also from the jim's uh, post on gmat club he wrote that uh, blindly follow the process don't uh, try to uh, skip the process and um, and you uh, so so that's what i followed like, i just i actually followed what jim said in his gmat club that you need to follow the process to uh, get get the right answer and uh, this is there is one more concept called pre thinking so mm. uh, i didn't used to follow pre thinking in my first and second time like because i thought i can directly get the, i'm directly getting the right answer and i'm scoring good in my mocks so this is this is what works for me but but on the final day i don't know why it didn't work for me so that's why i made it clear to my myself that i will i will follow the whole process because mm. i don't want to keep attempting gmat i will follow what experts say and then i will attempt based on that but jim is not an expert i am an expert so is pail yes but Haan, i mean, so, but then why did you not follow that in the second attempt maybe i think uh, i'm a bit stubborn that i don't listen till i don't uh, ad, uh, what do you call adapt things till the time i make mistakes like i think mm. from I, i learned only from doing mistakes that i think that is one thing uh, which made me listen listen to someone who has gone through the same journey maybe okay it's it's interesting i mean and, and again you're not the only one i mean yeah. i i i interviewed three people in the last two days and mm. and each one of them has gone through the same journey and 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 it's just that when it it somehow feels that you need to get, go through a failure to to really get to saying i'm going to follow the process that is really yeah uh, i can say mm. so so which which again is is Uh, for me it's it's like hey man don't waste that money give the money to us just follow the process <laughs> because yeah, actually in my yeah in your what in your in my first like in in my when i started pre- preparation right so i was very eager to finish the course i was not focusing on building my ability or mm-hmm. or, or not testing my ability in the right way you know i was if i frankly say i was trying to finish the course as soon as possible try to score as max in the mocks and then try to score max in the my uh, actual attempt the exact exact second exact thing that i'm hearing twice about twice today yeah. exactly the same words <laughs> verbatim so, it's, it's like okay so when i uh, did when i was preparing for my last uh, last attempt i i went through the whole course again and for every question which was there in the course i <laughs> i did it very religiously i went through the forum and read it about uh, what what all uh, what all question people are asking and uh, so wait, w- like whatever minor doubt i had like i used to post it in the forum get the answer from shraddha shraddha was very very helpful in answering all my sc queries like that was really one major uh, the what you call uh, major uh, like help in uh, improving my verbal ability and i want to okay. just say some thanks shraddha so That's that good. I I I I will let her know. Yes. So, so. Okay, that's good. That's I, I'm I'm really glad to to hear that. Hmm. So the that is one thing like I did the whole course again and uh, for RC I used to follow uh, like I used to read newspapers uh, on the internet like New York Times and Wall Street Journal hmm. and after reading every uh, editorial editorial kind of article i used to mm-hmm. ask questions uh, to myself that why is the author writing the article what is the intention of the author and mm-hmm. uh, whether the article is neutral or uh, the author is trying to prove something argue mm-hmm. for something 
maybe he's trying to put forth the point mm-hmm. so the, all that analysis for one month like increase my speed increase my ability and reflected on all sections like if you strengthen rc it helps in cr also and if you improve cr sc it helps in understanding rc faster and easier also yes there's a symbiotic relationship between every yeah, each between, of the three subsections every, correct so 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 that's true okay now how did you use scholarenium so for rc i i mostly use scholarenium for making custom quizzes so mm. i think once in two days i used to have custom quiz of like uh, mm. uh, maybe 18 20 questions comprising of questions from every section mm-hmm. and especially especially uh, especially for rc i used to have separate rc quiz for uh, rc quiz of uh, like around 3 4 rcs and i used to do it in i think 15 hmm. i don't remember the exact time i used to set i think 15 20 minutes for 3 mm-hmm. 4 3 4 rcs and hmm. that i you i did it daily till i exhausted all the material <laughs> yeah i mean i can see that i'm i'm looking at your attempt history over here so uh, so so you know uh 12 question quiz good accuracy over here this again is is um, is a is a nine question quiz really good accuracy so you have two passages over here all hard questions 90% i mean you were doing really well towards the end yeah so 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 medium questions i mean this is it's 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 excellent towards the end that 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 i can really look at barring this one quiz i don't know what was happening here uh, i think where... i didn't I did I didn't do the full quiz or i think i i uh, i quit the quiz in between i think left the quiz something happened i think okay uh, because mm-hmm. these two are the only ones where i see you uh, going and and again it's not a full passage thing. yes yeah. but but over here i mean i i definitely see really good scores here and then with a good number of questions i mean nine questions is a is a good size quiz uh, over here again really good size quiz so good weighted average scores over here so so yes i i mean i can steadily see the improvement happen uh, essentially over here so, so in my uh, for my last attempt uh, mm-hmm. so when i was going through the sc course so mm-hmm. um, though sc was my strong area but still i made a point that i need to send in my ability and like make it very strong so that i don't falter in the final attempt like in the actual attempt so uh, i suppose i do pronouns or maybe verbs so mm-hmm. after i i do the verbs uh, section mm-hmm. i used to take a custom quiz like suppose uh, i start with 10 easy questions of verbs i score 100% then i do mm-hmm. 10 questions medium in verbs uh, mm-hmm. and then 10 questions hard in verbs so this is the way i did for all section and uh, similarly for cr okay so there was a certain method that you had that's method, very good yeah. that's good mm-hmm. i mean and and i think it, it it has as long as it's logical you mm-hmm. didn't get there even though you didn't take class the classical ability quizzes you made sure you went through the easy medium and hard part yeah you actually i think i initially ex- uh, did most of the questions this way so the uh, but later i realized i should have done ability quizzes so but ability quizzes i think require some empty like unattempting questions in the uh, scholarium so i think yes. i uh, so by the time i realized i should have attempted that uh, the yeah, but i mean you had a, you had a logical way of going through it so i think uh, that was fine Hmm. So so let's talk about your post uh, uh, GMAT. So you already have an admit from ISB. Yeah. You are a semiconductor engineer. You've Good. been doing that for about four years now, and hmm. um, and 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 so why an MBA? MBA primarily because like currently I'm in a pure technical role. Hmm. So to get more exposure about business and uh, move to a business development or. Uh, Or maybe a role where I uh, make make an uh, make a more impact. Mm. So that's where I wanted to be in the long term. So uh, if mm. I can like if I keep continuing, then it would be it will take more time to reach to that role. So mm. MBA seems like and you and MBA also you build a very good network of talented individuals who come from very diverse background. Mm-hmm. So that is also one more uh, uh, like good point of an MBA and also. Uh, uh, it uh, like doing an mba from a um, what do you call it a, a good uh, mm-hmm. branded college then it gives you a head start into the uh, into a new career and gives you the brand name okay sounds i think that that's a fair reason yes mm-hmm. so you are very happy with isp the admin that yeah. you have so do you have so any in- question for me in so that initially case? when i got a 750 um, i was very confused whether should i go abroad or or be in india because all of my friends 
uh, who got a near like uh, got a score near a 750 were applying all were all applying abroad like nobody was thinking about to stay in india so that's where i consider whether i'm taking making the right decision so wanted to get an opinion from you like uh, if i see myself long in india in the long term would hmm. going abroad to us uh, and then coming back would that be a good idea or staying uh, in india doing an mba from the west college in india and uh, then building a career i don't think there's a bad idea here either way okay. Okay. they're both good okay that's what I'll, i i i would say so so okay. uh, i mean um it, it's 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 like you can't go wrong either way the only way you'd go wrong is if you went to a bad school either in india or abroad Hmm. so um so i mean the choice that you're making is a good choice uh the choice that if if you decide to apply to usb schools and if you do it diligently and if you get into a good college that will be a better choice as is, is okay. what my opinion would be but okay. does it mean that this is a bad choice no it's a really good choice as well so okay. so i think it's 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 about what you want in the end it's it's one of those things it's it's like when i was uh, doing engineering is enc better than computer science and the idea is what is it that you are more interested in in mm. the end that's what matters so in, in this case i mean you 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 you're doing an mba from a really good school you want to stay in india and in india has a lot of opportunity today mm. uh if let's say had you gotten into let's say ucla anderson or or a ross or one of those other schools i think the the own, the part that you'd be missing on is being exposed to uh, that culture of education culture mm-hmm. and 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 i think i uh, even though isb has really good professors professors at good business schools in the us are still better so okay. so, so, so i think that part is there uh, mm-hmm. so i think that's one part that you'd be missing out on uh, mm-hmm. but but i mean the education in in india is really good the, mm. the career opportunities post isb they are better than they have ever been and mm. and, and 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 so um, so yeah i mean it it's not a bad choice anyway it's it's, it's both of them are good choices mm. one thing which concerns me at isb like is the huge like the large batch size of isb is like around 900 now so I think mm-hmm. the com- the placements get and the the curriculum is very 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 competitive in that sense because the the cohort is very. Oh, you are a competitive guy. You are from huh. NSIT. You mm-hmm. you have a good GMAT score. So so yes, mm-hmm. I mean it's a big school. It has multiple mm-hmm. campuses. Uh, so so I don't think you should be concerned. I mean, big schools come with their own uh, challenges and also the opportunities. The opportunities mm-hmm. are every good company will come there. Yeah. the challenges are it's a big school so so again as you really said mm. uh, you, you 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 won't have that cozy cohort so so i think that mm. part always comes i mean how it is is a big class so does gsp mm. chicago and and a few other Columbia schools mm. uh, at the same time tuck has a very small group and they're much mm. more close knit together but again it it it's it's advantages and disadvantages i think i i don't Got think there's any is a right or wrong over there it's about what you mm. want mm. so so if you want to really say that hey i want to be able to tap into my network and and you know any company in the world i want to be able to really see where where someone from my alma mater went or or is working isb will do that as would harvard uh, on the other hand if you say i want to know my classmates intimately and i want to make sure that that you know i can count on 50 people that's what a tuck would do because mm. it's in a remote location and then the class size is super small and they make sure that you emphasize on community and i think they both have their advantages okay so how are these us brands like kellogg or all the top colleges like top 20 college us colleges recognized in india so like i heard that only only the top 5 like the harvard stanford wharton ross columbia like almost these brands are recognized but all the brands all the colleges uh, which are lower in ranking are not not i think here is the point right uh, you work at you work for arm Yeah, correct. Arm knows all of these schools. People at Arm okay. know all of these schools. I mean, they'd be valuable okay. uh, over there. Yes, if you if you want to go to an Indian firm, yes. I mean, that's a very different thing. But but I mean, there's there's no shortage of opportunities from for people who graduate from Ross or Kellogg. I think one thing that you've got to recognize is, and which is where I mean, a lot of people don't recognize about an MBA is uh, when you are an engineer, you're you're kind of uh, 
uh, and engineering is a skill in, in, in the sense that you're, you're, you're getting knowledge. Mm-hmm. Okay. When it comes to uh, doing an MBA, you're actually trying to become a hunter in some ways. And, and, and a hunter, a good hunter knows how to hunt anywhere. Okay. So, so that brand name, I mean, when you think about, you know, graduating from Kellogg and, and talking to someone who's at a, at a, a certain place, you just the, the insights, the, 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 the overall spectrum of knowledge that you'd have, you'd be able to make your point. Okay. I mean, a school doesn't matter. Today, when, when at ARM, when you're talking about your promotion next year, Mm-hmm. Does a discussion from the faculty or from a, an NIT? Does it no. come over? No, it will not come. In over. The same way. In the same Only way. I think the, first, uh, the first job, I think the, uh, the brand name might help in getting the first job, but later, I think the, it's only the performance. Even, even, the... even that, it, you probably got campus placement, but uh, mm. in the US, most people, when they're in B school, they actually go find their own job. I found my own job post my MBA. Okay. And that's where the hunter analogy is much better where well, if you're a hunter you know how to hunt but uh, like just a frank question like when he, when someone is applying for a for a new job or maybe trying to make a shift then having a, a good school on your resume will make a difference no like like you are from um, maybe i am i am the bad or maybe it'll, ISB. yeah so it'll, it'll so it depends on how the hiring process is i'll be very frank okay. so okay. for example if you look at we are hiring big time right now we don't mm. look at your resume till you okay. and go through our assignments first. We look at your mm. resume just before the interview stage and your gateway to interviews is an assessment. Um, now, now, a, a school is a convenience when you're, you're hiring for entry-level jobs. Mm. Uh, uh, and, and, and at the same time, um, when post your MBA, if you're coming to India, you're probably even going to apply for a more senior level position, which is a much more consultative hiring. Mm. So, so, so there, these are not entry level jobs. Okay. Okay. So, um, so I think you, you've got to change your mindset with regards to how jobs are done. Okay. 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 So, I mean, I mean, ISB still go through campus placement and all of that stuff. Mm-hmm. But if you think about saying that, okay, I've been placed on campus means I can't get a job anywhere. That's something which, which is not true even for ISP. Okay. So, uh, so yeah. So from a job standpoint, coming back to India and, and doing that, uh, it's, I mean, not a problem at all. Okay. From a good school. Hmm. I mean, because you, the, the kind of knowledge that you'd have would be a, a lot more applicable than what you get from ISP. I mean, the kind of marketing that you'd learn at Kellogg, for example, or strategy at Kellogg, kind of case studies that you'd go through would would be would be and the kind of discussion you'd have would be a lot more in depth than you'd have at ISP. Oh okay. Like because it's a one year course because it's like uh, doesn't have like because no, it's like the quality of professors. I mean uh, it's the professors the professors I mean who've been at Kellogg they are people who've been in boardrooms and businesses. Mm, right. Right. They they know how people were thinking and that's something which you know, if a professor has been in that situation, he's been in that boardroom, he or she can talk about uh, 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 what exactly was going on. It's not just what was written in what's written in the HPR case study. Hmm. So, uh, so that's 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 the difference. Okay. So, uh, so yeah. So one more question I had, like, what, how to, how to conf- like, how do you actually? Uh, choose the post MBA career. So I was exploring options. So like product management is one of the good, like one of the uh, upcoming areas where the demand is good and uh, uh, what you call. And also one one area is consulting where you Mm -hmm. get pretty good business exposure. Mm -hmm. So how to actually choose because like product management is also in a technical domain because so I, I come from a technical domain. So would I, should I go for product management or, or, or should I? It depends uh, on what you want. I mean, again, this is a very, it, it depends on what you want. I mean, uh, this product management is not technical, frankly. A company that okay. does technical product management you, is hiring you to be a program manager, not a product manager. Okay. Okay. So, so and yes, people do confuse product management as, te- as being very technical. Okay. So, so. 
product management is very similar to to running a mini business okay. in in the true form consulting on the other hand is is just telling someone this is how i think you should run your business mm-hmm. and, right. and, and and it's not executing and mm. which, i mean if you like that that mm. can be really rewarding but life is truly screwed up over there in mm. my opinion uh, but mm. the money is really so mm. um, so yeah it just depends on what you want okay this i mean good product management managers are worth their weight in gold and, okay. and and so are good consultants okay so, so the the path which people generally take in consulting is they work for 4 5 years they get very good business exposure they work in industry they get to know how business function so and then they make an make an exit and move to the industry their specific industry where they have done most consulting projects or where they have the expertise in so that path look looks attractive to me because you get a very good exposure uh, across industries because sometimes you get uh, projects in consulting in multiple industries uh, one after the other so it it, it, it can... depends it depends so so definitely people do that what you're uh, whatever you're saying at the same mm-hmm. time uh, 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 the downside of it is in consulting you never exe- execute anything so okay. the, so the problem that i've seen is people who who are consultants they're really good analysts you can analyze okay. strengths and weaknesses but when it comes to fixing those weaknesses when it comes to that leadership piece that's where they lack okay because they've never fixed anything but sometimes uh, like few few consulting companies also work with the client in their execution till till the execution point that's, till the problem that companies such as accenture do but then they okay. don't do strategy a whole lot okay 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 these so, M, the mbb firms don't don't work work till the execution point till, till not the a whole lot just because their pricing okay. is such it okay. becomes prohibitively expensive okay yeah. so 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 that's kind of where the guy who does strategy doesn't do consulting so i've seen a mm. lot of people who who actually do that transition that you're really saying mm. some of them end up doing really well in the execution part and and those people actually end up becoming what what i would call as as, mm. as regional heads or 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 end up in 15 20 years being you know at at the executive position mm. on the other hand i've also seen consultants who would move laterally so who who would basically move from being a consultant at a mckinsey to to essentially a, a you know a, a director of strategy a director okay. of strategy doesn't have in a whole lot of execution part okay. to it mm. so mm. so 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 but they don't really take care of pnl or profit and loss just because in the ins- they haven't had that experience and the, the limited thing the time they try to do this they falter that so so there's that that's the downside of consulting yeah a those five years are shitty b i mean you travel a lot uh, mm. if you don't like it you'd, you'd hate it and and b you don't get to learn execution and mm. frankly if you're six years post your mba and if you haven't learned leadership if you've not gone through the loops uh, the position that you join at it becomes difficult to learn leadership just because okay. your margin for error is very little yeah that's just, hmm. right so hmm. um, so yeah so that's i mean this 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 pros and cons to everything Correct. that way so um, so it depends on what you want in the end and where your heart is and what you are good at and what you're willing to work towards okay so actually i i i consulting to be attracted to me because because i've been in a in a, in a niche role in a in a semiconductor industry so i have not got much business side exposure so consulting is a field which which i have read about and found that it can give me the exposure and the learnings about how different industries function and then maybe i can make a decision that yeah this is the industry i want to be in the long term and then move uh, move do your mba i think your mba will tell you quite a bit of okay you okay. are uh, fairly naive with regards to the business side of things if okay. you truly want to learn read up a few mm. books okay hey i've been reading few books so which one are you been reading so uh, right now i'm reading swipe to unlock which is mostly around product management okay so someone suggested i like i was talking to few friends who said to read this and uh, regarding consulting i was reading like some some uh, mba pdfs which which are generally circulated inside a mba school uh, about uh, management consulting like how it grew why there is a need for management consulting and all those things so oh, those you are not reading business books you are reading how to get a job that's not a business book no no like just about management consulting like what it is and uh, why is it 
Why is it present? Yeah, so that's kind of that's again you're not learning business there. Okay. Okay. If you want to learn business, just read books on by 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 uh, uh, um, uh, who's read book read what is strategy reads innovators dilemma. Uh, okay. Uh, I mean, read good business books. Read Harvard Business Review. Okay. Okay. Uh, I mean, those are uh, read books by Robert uh, Kaplan or, or mm. David P. Norton. I mean, good professors, HBR professors, GSP Chicago professors. I mean, the questions about USB schools versus ISP, just when you read those books, you, those questions would be answered. Oh, okay. You'd, you'd see the depth of research those guys do. Hmm. So, so, so those are books. These are what you're talking about is, if, you, if I were to really say this is what you're reading as a kunji with regards to what used, it's not a textbook. It's, it's like what kunji yeah, yeah, used to be. Yeah. So, so read proper mm. textbooks and you'd learn some way more about business than, than, than okay. most people around you would know. Okay. So are these books like, you know, I have heard about this book. So are these books recommended inside an MBA to read or like people out like who are, who are just, just in the pre MBA journey can, can also read these books. Like just asking. Oh, anyone can read these books. Okay. There is okay. nothing in an MBA that a professor will teach. You can pretty much learn all of it yourself. Okay. So, so I basically bunged half my MBA classes. The other half were valuable. The half <laughs> that I didn't find valuable, I would just sit out and read books. Okay. So, so yeah, anyone can read them, and they're super. Mm-hmm. Well so, so, the frankly speak, asking like, uh, like in regards to our discussion till now, like, should I reconsider my decision of joining ISB or, or like, because uh, if don't, I want to apply abroad, then I want to. You don't ask me this question. Read a couple of books. Okay. And then you okay. come to your own decision. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, all right, we're all good talking to you. Uh, so, so thank you very much. And uh, if, you know, uh, you could also.